Welcome back to the table. Today, Ryan and I just played Delta. This is the newest game from Game Brewer, uh, one that we hadn't got a chance to take a look at yeah. or experience in any way, shape, or form before now, which is when I believe it's about to deliver. I think it's going to be an Essen yep. release. Yeah, for retail, yeah. Um, and it's also going to be delivering to those who backed it. This is a unique game that kind of feels like a little worker placement, although your workers are cards that yeah, are in a, your hand. A little hand management mixed Defin in there. Definitely hand management. Um, some would say deck building, but there's no deck. It's hand building yeah, because hand you building. are acquiring new cards to add to your hand. And then it's got an interesting thing where some of those cards that you use are kind of out of play for a little while until you can pop them back into your hand. But Anyway, there's a lot of things going on, yeah. and we wanted to talk to you a little bit about <laughs> this game, and of course, then ultimately who it's for and who it's not. Yeah, for. now I'm going to start by saying this game was almost tailor made for me. I think, I think looking so. looking at this board, obviously, I'm a little bit biased just by the presentation. It's oh, got the this steampunk thing. Yeah, it's That's got this very about. cool steampunk theme, and just the way the game looks. I love what's going on here with all the different mechanics. the The heart of the game is that you are exploring the delta which is this map here in the sec in the center of the board but you almost have like three different mini games happening yeah and the exploration of the delta which is happening here over here you're doing all your engineering where you're building these inventions and then over here you're researching all the different animals that you're finding in Me the delta are mech animals mech animals because it is a steampunk theme and you're doing that by playing cards all the card the cards are characters that are again very steampunky but i the, the artwork the graphic design for the most part, I, I could have done with a little bit better exploration tokens, but for the most part, I think that the production on this game is phenomenal. And when I sit down to play a Euro game that also happens to look this good, that does, they, I, I'm going to be honest, that sways me. Like, oh, that yeah. gives it some bonus points. 100%. And look, look at these little, like, the vials and the gems. Like, it's, it's very cool. Yeah, it is really nice. It's really well produced. Uh, and not just the production, but the look and feel, like Ryan was yeah. saying. And whether you like steampunk or not. The art and the graphic design is done really, really well. And yeah. in this game, you're going to be spending six rounds, round after round, playing cards to those three different sections from your hand. At the beginning of the game, you actually get rid of randomly three of the cards from your hand. And you start I with guess. ten cards. You discard three. You'll have seven. You'll have seven. They'll and then come back. They they will come back. Yeah. It's up to you to decide <laughs> which ones come back. But you're going to use those cards that you're left with on your turn to play cards into these three sections. Now you can only play one card into each of those three sections. And it's kind of interesting because as you play cards, you're going to be doing something in that section. Um, worst case is you're just going to be collecting basically some resources. Yeah, worst case You could play a card that basically just, you're always going to be able to collect some form of resource. It's got some interesting things. Yeah. Some of the resources are printed on those cards, but then there's these coins. And the coins represent also those same resources but they're different depending on which section you play in. So you can see if you play this guy here, you're getting two crystals, and this coin represents here, one more crystal. The coin over here is a gear, which lets you go up the gear tracks. And over here, it's a potion or vial, yeah, vial whatever. that you're going to use to do a lot of the things with the animals. Yeah, and you are playing, like David said, one card to each, sec each section, but you're not limited in your in your order. So you can play to each one of these sections in any order. Now, we've just, we're just playing a two-player game, so it's basically just myself and David. But when we're actually playing, there will be cards. Now, we just finished the game. Yes. But over the course of the game, there's cards up at the top that you're competing for. And these cards are going to represent some of the animals you're finding, some of the research you're doing, and some new characters that you can recruit. So when you're going to a location... Going to it last kind of lets you see maybe what other players are playing because the stars on every card determine who gets to draft those cards first. So if you go to a location last, you can you know maybe win that card with the least amount of stars. However, if there's a tie, the person to the left who went there first wins the tie and they might have taken the good thing that you wanted because they got there first. So there is definitely a timing element and not just for that aspect, but also for maybe going to a place to get the resources you need to then go somewhere else and use those resources. Yeah, for instance, you might just be building up for one big turn here in the Delta to move. And when you move around this map, it's going to take crystals, generally speaking. And at first, we all start here and we spread out. As you go further, as you might have guessed, you're going to have to spend more crystals as well as some other things. But you might play over here a card that has some of what you need over there. Yeah. 
but maybe a couple crystals. So you get those crystals. Maybe play here next, get a couple, one more crystal and maybe minor other actions. Then you finally go here, you've collect all those crystals so you might be able to make that big move. Each section like that has things like that. You might want to store up gears to spend yeah. over here. You might want to store up potions or the vials to spend over here. And you can spend a lot of these depending on all the different actions you can take. The Delta is really the only one that has one core action of exploration. Yeah, the Delta, you, when you go to the Delta, that's all you're doing is exploring. You're just paying the resources and you're moving to another area. Now, just there's, one. There's some restrictions there. You'll see some airships out on the board that have to be present. You see some of these locations require a captain or a pilot that you have to have played uh, with a big steering wheel to, or yeah. in order to get to some of these islands. But this one just really has one action. The other two sections of the board, the engineering and the research, they uh, have special actions that you can only access if you play the right card to that area. So again, this is coming back to that timing and to that kind of hand building element yeah. and the hand management, because to trigger, to, like for, to take an engineering, for example, you have to have played a card with that icon. Uh, over here, to take one of these scoring cards, you have to have played a card with that microscope icon. And if all those cards are buried in your discard pile and you've got none in your hand, you're kind of in trouble. Of course, there's some ways around that. There's some tokens you can get that just give those abilities to cards. So again, a lot of timing goes into how to take these actions. And you might end up in a situation where you really need one of those engineering tokens, but you don't have a card in your hand with that engineering ability. And that's just, that's kind of how it happens. Yeah, and all of the actions in those spaces are just some of what you're considering. Like Ryan mentioned, yeah. those cards above are equal, if not in some cases, greater of a variable that you want to consider as you're taking your actions, placing your guys. Because after everyone else, everyone has taken their actions, you're going to look at the cards and you're going to look at those stars. And in that sort of initiative order, higher stars or more yeah. stars goes first, you're going to take cards from the section. So here you take characters, here you take those animals, and here you're going to take these cards kind of are variable yeah, throughout two, the game. There's two types of cards. There's mission cards that come out early, and then there's just benefit cards that come out later. So they kind of give you your missions early so you can get all your missions and then know kind of what your goal is. But then later on, like getting a mission on the fourth round and going, well, I only have one turn to complete this. Right. Uh, they give you some uh, resources to just gain instead. Yeah, that last section, the missions are nice. You don't have to really worry about them too much. It just gives you some guidance. The animals are really the aspect of the game that I think you consider the most. Well, it's where you got your mo by it, far the most of your points. It is from where the I got most of the animal or most of my points. I look here, you look at the kind of animals that corresponds to the four different types over here. And by the way, it's mechanimals. Oh, keep, so yeah, it is, they are mechanimals. We might call them animals. Uh, but if I go first, I get my first pick of animal there. And you're basically wanting to collect not sets of animals, but it depends on how far you've gone up these various tracks. So you can see I've gone all the way to the end of this track. So each of these animals is going to be worth seven points. Therefore, I wanted to collect a lot of those. Yeah, so that's going to be a huge variable here when I place because I might not want to get a lot done. I might just want to get that one animal that's right. up there. If there's two up there and Ryan's going to hate draft it, I'm going to, I want to try to get that initiative. You can come here just to get the resources and not even take the action just so you can get one of those animals. hundred percent. And this is where the hand management really comes into this game because these tracks have to move up. If you want your animals or mechanimals to score points, each one of those four, like David said, has its own track. And really, the primary way you're moving up this track is by removing cards from the game. Every card in your hand has one or more of these symbols, and as you call them out, you're moving up those tracks. Of course, you might make a mistake. You might call out all of the cards that do a particular action, yeah. and then you're locked out of that action. You better find a way to either get some of these bonus tiles or you know, hopefully a card comes up that has those abilities. But that becomes very important uh, in your hand management because, you know, you might take this action when the card that you wanted to call is actually still in one of your discard piles. And that's just bad timing again. Yeah, you really have to coordinate quite a bit. And yeah. Ryan is correct. If you start calling all of one type of symbol that's in the upper right hand corner, it will have an impact on some other aspect of the game. I don't, we haven't looked thoroughly through the cards, but they may be balanced such that they're connected to certain other things because I got rid of a lot of these symbols yeah. here to go up this track. And then I quickly found that my whole hand, all the cards I had, I had very few of the purple crystals sure. on any of them. I don't know if those two are connected, but for me, they certainly were because then I wasn't, 
it was more difficult for me to do things here. Whereas the flip side, Ryan, you focused on this. I mo pretty much got all my points from exploration. And you had just a mountain of crystals almost every turn they were spending. And then he had some tiles that he got over here that let him do, you could flip it over and do an extra explore here when you yeah. do an explore, which is gigantic. Otherwise, you're really not going to get very far on this yeah, you've map. Gotta, you've got to rely on these inventions. You've got to rely on these tiles and then the bonus tiles you can get here. And then we didn't talk about these much, but there's these dragonfly tiles you can gain. And each one of these oh, tiles is some bonuses. kind of benefit that you can get as well. Um, so there's a lot that you can uh, have to manage in the game. Uh, one thing I want to mention that I think is really cool that this game does is for the sixth round, the last round of the game, you're not fighting over regular cards anymore because you can't really use them. You're not yeah. getting another round. Instead, the sixth round is replaced by all of these instant bonus cards that are very significant. And they just give you maybe that last little thing you needed to you know complete a mission or to maximize scoring. Yeah, that was really cool. They're just as vital. When yeah. those flip at the end of the game, you're like, oh, now my initiative is incredibly right. important in that space. In fact, my last turn when we played, I considered, okay, I've got to win that. Yeah. I must win that. And I thought that you might try to foil me I there. I thought about it. You ended up not, you used your star yeah. over here, which increased your initiative, but I was re ready to put this star on a two star guy. Just to get the three stars? Just to get three stars so I can yeah. get that last point. So yeah, I mean, as, as I'm kind of talking about this game, you can kind of start to already get an idea of who I think this game is for. And it's definitely yeah. for, for gamers like me that, that really lean into that planning aspect. That hand management is so important. And I hate to say that you could really screw yourself up, but you can. Yeah. You play one thing wrong and it can ruin your turn. And you know, you just gotta kind of roll with it. I had a few turns where I ended up not being able to pull off the thing I wanted because I, I only had maybe like this guy that gives you either this one or that one. And you gotta decide where he's gonna play. And in your head, you're thinking, oh, I can do both of these things. No, you can do one or the other. Yeah. So there's a lot of tension. We didn't talk about this initiative track, but this is how you determine which bonuses you're gonna get. Some of these bonuses give you more coins for these benefits. Some of these bonuses give you those icons, but if another player takes it, you might've been counting on that. So it is it's super tight and almost feels very restrictive, especially early on. It can, for sure. This game dangles a lot of point scoring opportunities in front of you. So if you like that, yeah. if you like sort of conducting that orchestra of, oh, I've got this card that scores me for this and this one for this, and I have to get those there, and okay, I wanna to try to do everything. And then be prepared for a couple punches in the gut when like, oh, I can't do all of what I wanna do because it has so many of those things, you're like, oh, I want to make all of these things happen. And there's a good chance you're not gonna be able to, especially sure. at higher player counts. Now there will be more cards out there, but scoring I think is going to err on the lower side with higher yeah, player I, counts I think, than, than it was with two. I think you saw, I think you'll get a little bit more flexibility in two players. You're, you're not competing as much like, You'll notice over here on this track, David and I went up two different, like we each went yeah, up two. We went our routes. Uh, and we just kind of ignored, I ignored all those bulls. Maybe I should have hate drafted some, to it be felt, honest, because David like did, did win. You so took one bull. I took one bull because it gave me an every round benefit of getting those purple gems, yeah. which I needed for exploration. So it wasn't a hate draft necessarily. No, sure. Probably could have, but in a four player game, it's definitely not gonna happen. You're gonna have multiple people fighting for different types of animals for sure. So who's it not for? You might be thinking, well, well this all sounds good. Both of you sound like you're thrilled with this. We do like the game. I think Ryan likes it a little bit more than That's I do. That's definitely more my style with that, that tense planning. The long-term planning. Yeah. That is not so much my thing, and that's who I'd say it's not for. If, if people like sort of the slot machine effect of a game that gives you a ton every round, sure. and you're like, oh, what a windfall, look at all these combos, uh, you know, like a tableau builder or something yeah. like that, where you've got all these synergies and combos. This one's more of a longer term planning. I mean, you're even planning each round, like how am I gonna play my three cards? That's even gonna change as people play their cards, yeah. things like that. So if you enjoy a lot of uh, feedback, a lot of like, why is this doing this? Word. You know, if, if you look at the game like this and you go, what is this gonna do for me again? <laughs> right. Well, it, nothing right now necessarily, but if you come back here later and wanna get some of these, you know, so there's, it's, it's a more of a planning thing. And if you're not into that, it may not be for you. With that said, I came around on this as we played this, I was enjoying it more as we went now, it's not just because I did well with the game in the end, but it it came together. So I think this is one of those games yeah. where you get a game under your belt or a play of it under your belt. You're probably going to be apt to enjoy it a little bit more. But just keep that in mind when you're teaching new gamers. 
you're teaching them this game, you want to make sure and go through and kind of maybe give them the teach and give them, you know, maybe even some tips and strategy. Yeah, it'll definitely be more efficient in future games because there's a lot of efficiency. And also, it's not really a worker placement game as you'd imagine a worker placement game to be. You're, you're not sitting here with, you know, a pool of workers. And you're not taking four or five actions and, you know, grabbing all these. Like, you're taking literally just three actions and you have to take these three actions. You can't take three exploration actions, you know, yeah, you're that's taking fair. one of each. So It kind of lies somewhere between worker placement and action selection. It, it, right, it's some, it straddles that line pretty well. And I think if you're looking for a more traditional worker placement experience, this is definitely not going to give it no. to you. You might find yourself like, well, I don't want to do this. I can't I can't benefit from this. Well, you should have planned better. <laughs> and, and like that's, you know. Get good like that's a, That's a saying. terrible thing to say at the table, but this game does lean into that. And so if you're that player, if you know that about yourself, like, that could ruin somebody's exp like that even that one action where they're like i put this down i get one one purple gem that's my turn like that doesn't feel good so yeah that doesn't feel good also there's going to be like ryan said earlier you might do a thing where like you decide which of these stacks of cards you want to bring back into your hand at the end of each round you bring that in the next round starts and then you're like oh and should, none of these guys i should have i should have brought right. this stack because you have to think about that round and if you didn't think fast enough to, when you were deciding which stack to pick up, you might find yourself a little bit behind. Well, it's interesting because when you play these these people, they all have, you know, actions that benefit one specific particular section of the board, and then they come back to that discard pile. So you might have like all of my microscope people are in this pile, and all of my invention people are in this pile. Yeah. You might you might behave you at some point just to play a guy over here oh, just to get him in this discard pile so that when you pull it back you have some variety because I pulled back at one point and I had all of the same power and none of that power and I was like well all right yeah that happened to me too and it just made me decide well I'm gonna go hard in this direction <laughs> right. uh, you know to go up the gear track so anyway that is all of our thoughts on Delta if you have any questions at all please make them in the comments below we'll get down there and answer whatever we can. Until next time, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then.